My first guest, unforgettable smile, has brought smiles to television audiences for years. She's won Emmys for both the Mary Tyler Moore Show and, of course, Golden Girls. Will you please welcome a woman with two of the deepest dimples in the entertainment industry, Miss Betty White. You look gorgeous. You look good. Oh, that is uh, really that is smashing. And I, I'm sorry to hear that you're into begging, but I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I, I can see the point. What are you going to do with your rejects, honey? Uh, I'll call you up. We'll look them over together. Will you? Well, I, but you've got a good body. We don't have to worry about you. Well, thank you, but your pearls are bigger than mine. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Compliments of Barney's. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Here. Okay. Compliments of J.C. Penny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's nice to see you with so much jewelry and everything because I found a picture of you with you're only wearing gloves. Really? There is a magazine called Celebrity Sleuth, okay? And they have pictures <laughs> of celebrities in their youth who sometimes pose for things and they found some little playing cards and there you are can you see it there you are oh there's, there's that little devil now. there you are looking very good yes can you see it there's only one slight problem it ain't me <laughs> it's not you no that ain't me but but I, i'm i'm terribly flattered and i love the idea but no, that was the, that picture has been around for lo these many years. Obviously, sorry, sweetie. And, um, <laughs> and but you, somebody brought you... it to Alan years ago and said, at, at first it had little bunny ears and little white fuzzy things here. Well, then somehow during the the years that transpired, the little fuzzy stuff just went away, and it was just all me supposedly. But it's, uh, I don't know where they got it. I've never posed nude. I, I mean, I, I laugh at myself in the bathroom alone. But when, see, I, I, on the other hand, posed one time, and I'm proud of it, Betty. Yes. Do, well, are you proud really? of it. Oh, did you get a stunt? Oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That's Oprah's body. <laughs> I see. Oh, there you are. <laughs> That's you! Sorry, fella. <laughs> <laughs> would yeah. you oppose? I would oppose it a second if I had a great body. Well, if I had a great body, maybe I... No, I really wouldn't. I just don't know why, but it's... You know, the, the lights are so hot and you get sweaty. I don't think it's but, nice. No. But they, how do you keep yourself now? Because you have a good... You have... You've been a widow how long? It'll be nine years in June. So you've had some romances. Yeah. It's a yeah. nice way to put it. I haven't been just sitting around, you know, playing cards with those funny cards. <laughs> How did you feel the first time somebody saw you besides your husband? You know what I mean? Like, I would figure when it happens, I'll wear just three big pieces of soap on a rope and just say, I'm taking a shower. Whoop, 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 you know. Well, see, uh, that's the beauty of having a lot of dogs because I just pick up the dogs and then stand behind them and they, nobody ever <laughs> sees. Like, no, I, uh, I must admit, there hasn't been a lot of that going on. I just. Uh, Alan was a tough act to follow, and you just, you just don't, uh, you don't go sleeping around that much. Oh, on occasion you get carried away, but not, uh, not that much. Have you had a big romance? Seriously? One. Mm-hmm. And what made you pull back at the last minute, say, I don't want to get married? Oh, I, I just couldn't imagine getting married again at this late date. You know, it, it was tough enough to get married to Alan. I mean, I, it took me a long while to get myself whooped up to that. I like being single. You, you didn't want to get married to him? Because I, I knew you when you were married to him, and you were so happy. Oh, well, it took me a year to get smart, for heaven's sake. I kept saying, no, he started immediately saying, will you marry me? And I, I don't know what was the matter with me. I, well, I, one thing, he lived in New York, and I lived out here, and I didn't want to move to New York. And then I figured out, well, it's either that or spend your life without Alan Ludden. And I thought, maybe I better get smart. I would have had a whole extra year. Did you... T is that true? Because you told somebody that he used to wear the ring. He bought you a ring and you wouldn't accept it? He bought me the ring and so he, he said, you're going to wear this someday. And I said, no way. Now that's, that's out. So he wore it on a chain around and it got sand and suntan oil and stuff. So when I finally said I'd marry him, I think he was kind of, he hated to give up his ring. He just loved wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you married? We missed 18 years by three days. 
Now, when I know when my husband Edgar died, um, the first year, it's funny because you said you wouldn't get married. First year, I think I would have married anybody. Oh, really? Because I was John? so lonesome that anybody nice would have come along. I would have just said, yes, now that it's two and a half years and I'm becoming independent, I understand what you say. You know what I'm saying, and it gets better, say, believe me. Ah, it, no, who needs this? Edgar would have done it this way. You, know. you love having a relationship and you love having a friend, but uh, I, when I did get deeply involved, it was not that long after he died, and I think it was, you're so vulnerable at that point that somebody thinking you're wonderful, or at least making you believe he thinks you're wonderful, is you need that terribly because yes. there's nobody here who's going to tell you you're wonderful. Yeah, and that changes everything. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back to talk about, obviously, Golden Girls and Mary Tyler Moore and all kinds of things, so please stay with us. You know, we were just talking also during the break about being widows and everything else. Did you find that your husband did most of the fighting for you, that you had to learn a whole new way of coping? Oh, yeah. Yeah, really. Because Alan was, well, he used to say, you know, everybody says, gee, Betty, you're so nice to get along with. Not everybody. Well, no, not everybody. No, I, mean, I, I can give you a chapter and verse. Who? Well, two of the other Golden Girls, but I'm not going to give you names. Tall or short? <laughs> no, but... Alan was a one of each. <laughs> <laughs> Alan was one of these people that whatever went in here came right out here. Well, you know that yes. you knew him well, and he would always he couldn't dissemble. So if something irritated him or made him mad, or my God, it's hot in this studio, or it's too cold here, I'm free. It it all spews out. Where I you know I just don't worry about it, and I go home. But I go home, and then I'm uptight, and then I throw the car keys at the bedroom door and all that. He says, if people could really see you blow your stack, nice Betty White comes home. He, I said, well, I just save it for when I'm not around other people. But what do you do now to protect yourself? Somebody's got to say the studio's too hot, and you don't have Alan. No, you don't. You just don't worry about it. You yeah. just roll with the punch, and then when the big fights come along, then that's when you you have to hire people. To, you know what I miss the most? <laughs> what I miss the most, maybe maybe you can equate with this, sweetheart, is I don't have anybody. I lost my mother right after I lost Alan, and I don't have anybody to tell me when I screw up. You know, the people that you don't know that well will say, oh, gee, that was wonderful. Oh, boy, did you do that? Yeah, that's great. Where the two of them would say, I don't think so. That wasn't. And nobody's there to tell me that now. Do you ask, See, I find I ask people. I keep going around saying, am I right? And nobody's ever said to me in two years, no, you're not right. So now you know, what's the point of even asking? Yeah, that, that's true. And yeah. your best friends don't, don't want to bring you down. I have one good friend who will say, well, I wasn't real thrilled with that. Oh, really? Why? And then you're hurt. Oh, you, <laughs> you say, can't win. Oh, you get angry. Yeah, well, what do you know? Yeah, what do you know? <laughs> I do know about this. But it's funny. You would really yeah. do miss that. And there's no one to really tell you. Or to dish with. Or to be able to, you see something and you think, oh, I can't wait to get home and tell it. And there's nobody to do that yes. with. Yes, yes. And, or to kick somebody under the table at oh, a the dinner nudge. party. The family nudge yeah. or the family look. You know, yeah. just that little quick look. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what you miss. Those yeah. are the things that you can't replace. And you can't replace them with a new fella. Good luck on find a honey for Joan business. Oh, just a minute. Well, I mean. I'm very optimistic. You'll make do with the tools you've got, and you may get some pretty <laughs> funny tools. <in> there. <laughs> no, but things are totally different. Tell about your wedding day, because, you know, I always laugh. I remember one time you told me it was just like a fiasco. Oh, it, it couldn't have been worse, because it, uh, Alan lived in New York, and I lived in California, and we had used up all his time out in California with me saying, no, no, I'm not really going to get married. Finally, I said, yes, now all the time is used up, so we're, we have one weekend to go to Las Vegas to get married. So we're going to go over there with my mother and dad for the weekend because you had a three-day waiting period in, Cal in California. So we went over there to so get... He was to fly out on Thursday, and we were going to go to Vegas on Friday. Well, Alan had never missed a plane in his entire life. He missed the plane, got caught in traffic, missed the plane out of New York, called me from the airport and said, honey, I'm, I just, and as any nice, warm, red-blooded American girl, I said, why don't you just stay there? You know, I mean, that's not the way to start with a marriage. Well, it went from bad to worse. We got over to Las Vegas, all four of us, and it was fine. 
And he had the wedding presents in his briefcase, and he had a beautiful bracelet for me and a bracelet for my mom, and the wedding ring, the famous, he had had it cleaned up by now. And so we were all set, and they took us out on a jitney, you know, one of those way, way, way out there, you have to go on the golf cart to out to where you're thinking. So they showed us to our rooms, and I have, the night before I'm married, I had this gorgeous bridal suite. It's three big rooms and the shower is, half of it is black, half of it is pink and it has two doors on it. It's all wonderful. He's staying in a little phone booth down the hall that night and my folks are right across the, the aisle. So uh, we got down there to the rooms and all of a sudden Alan literally turned white. He said, oh my God. And he ran out. He ran all the way back. We had just been driven up. He ran all the way back. He had left the briefcase standing by the, the registration gifts. desk with all the gifts in it. And, it, well, it was just one of those nightmare things. Went out, and here's the little briefcase in Las Vegas, still sitting there right on the floor by a, Well, that was traumatic enough. The next morning, he got a... The only people we had at our wedding was my mother and dad and the bellman and the same man who married Mary Tyler Moore and Grant Tinker. And they, the hotel had sent up this spread that would go from here to the last row of all the goodies and the bottles and bottles of champagne and all that. Well, of course, we were taking off to get on a plane and, and we were gonna go down on our honeymoon to uh, Laguna and my folks were going back to Los Angeles. So we got to the airport and the travel agent had forgotten that it was June and that schedule had been changed. There's no plane that takes us down where we were going. So now the bride and groom get back on the plane with their mother and father and go, you know, go back to Los Angeles. Ah. And my mother and father were trying to pretend they didn't know us. We don't want people to think we went on your honeymoon with you for heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and where did you end up, just in LA? No, we, then we caught another plane and yes. went down to Laguna for three days. You were good friends with Mary Tyler Moore. Do you still? Still are. Still are. Oh, still are, absolutely. Yes. And with Grant. The beautiful part of, about it is I've been able to maintain the friendship with both of them, which is tough when your friends split up. Yes, and also you went out with Grant also for a while. No, no, you never. You never went out way in the, in the beginning? Never, ever socially that way, but uh, but I'm very good friends with his, his lady, Melanie Burke, and uh, so we have a nice friendship there and a wonderful friendship with Robert and Mary uh, Tyler Moore Levine. Did you... No, it was she came to you, didn't she, when Alan was very, very ill. I know there was some story there. I was up in Carmel. Alan had a stroke. Yes, it, I remember it, that. that. really got him. And uh, Mary's uh, son died at the same time. And she flew out from New York to Los Angeles to take care of, of uh, losing Richie. And I was up in Carmel with Alan, not expected to live through the night. And we, we, uh, we just got into a... A phone she called me even though her son had died that day called me and I took the call out of the nurse's desk you know how you do and st and we talked for about 20 minutes and it was the strangest that you just lost all track of time or where you were or anything and she kept saying where did it all go wrong because we'd had so much fun together all of us where did it all go wrong and I, I often think that if we could have known that night how good things would get for everybody after that except for the ones we lost, that you do get through a point like that in your life. But at that moment in time, you think there's no way ever. It's never going to be any better. Because look what's happened to you with Golden Girls, and she remarried and is so happy. And Well, in our lives, you, you just you, you pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Nobody knows that better than you, sweetheart. And keep going. Yeah. What do you want to do? We're in 1990. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'll have to shorten the bra straps just ever so slightly <laughs> and keep inhaled a lot. Um, I'd like to just keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm still writing and I love doing Golden Girls. I love the, those other old broads, the ladies that I work with. <laughs> and uh, it's just a, it's a delight. I'd like to do a movie for television. Most of it is work oriented and then I have, I have my other half of my life, which, which is being by myself up in Carmel, which I adore. And with the dogs. Oh, well, I'm never by myself because yeah, I've got the exactly. four legged. Well, I hope we, both the two of us will be sitting on couches saying, what did you say? Hey, hey yeah. what do you want to do in the next decade, Joni? Did you ever find a honey? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank for you, Good to see you. Happy, 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 happy. We'll be right back.